Aphorisms by Max Stirner. He who has power has right. Property is a victory. If you can, you should. My will is my reason. Our atheists are pious people. If it is right for me, it is right. Set no glittering hopes on institutions. Liberty of the people, that is not my liberty. One must uphold and assert himself against the world. At all times every man uses as much force and power as he possesses. Not to every man is that a limit which is a limit for the rest. The poor are to blame for their being men of excessive wealth. Of what use is it to a flock of sheep that no one abridges their free speech? They keep on bleating. Of what use is the freedom to you that brings in nothing? Might goes before right, and it does so by absolute right. I must rise in revolt to rise in the world. Either the club conquers the man, or the man conquers the club. Lamenting and petitioning only shows the confirmed beggars. It is precisely among cultured and intellectual people that fanaticism is at home. The Chinese are totally buried in precepts, and we Europeans are much about the same. He who wants much and knows the right way to get it has at all times taken it to himself. The men of the future will fight their way to many a liberty we do not even miss. The state rests on the slavery of labor. If labor becomes free, the state is lost. Liberalism would give to me what is mine, what is already mine, what has always been mine. As the individual is the whole of nature, so is he also the whole of the species. Everything over which I have might, which cannot be torn from me, is my property. The tiger who assails me is in the right, and I who strike him dead am also in the right. He who has the might has the right. If you have not the former, neither have you the latter. Whether I am right or not, there is no judge but myself. Condemning a man to machine-like labor amounts to the same thing to him as slavery. If a factory worker must tire himself to death eight or ten or twelve hours a day, he is cut off from becoming a complete man. As long as respect is commanded even for one's spiritual essence or alleged sacred truth, speech and press must be enthralled in the name of that essence or truth. The discoverer of a great truth well knows that it may be useful to other men, and as a greedy withholding would bring him no enjoyment, he communicates it. Property the communist affirms that the earth rightfully belongs to him who cultivates it, and its products to the producer. But I think differently that the earth belongs to him who can take it, or who does not let it be taken away from him, i.e. does not let himself be deprived of it. Whether what I think and say is Christian, that is not to me, nothing whatever. Whether it is human or inhuman, whether it is liberal or barbarous, that is not the question. What do I care about with regard to these adjectives? 
It is my thought, that is to say, it is me. That is sufficient. Every argument and every movement made for the liberty of the press is already an insurrection, conscious or unconscious. Philistine halfness will not confess this to itself until with a shrinking shudder it shall perceive what happens to men who think the liberty of the press is a reality. The state does not permit me to attain my full value. It crowds me down. It attains its own value by depriving me of mine. Its ultimate purpose is not my welfare, but to get some profit to itself out of me, to exploit me, in fact, to use me up. One is free in proportion as one is strong. I say liberate yourself in so far as you can, and you have done your part, for it is not given to every man to break through all limits. Before things holy, people lose all sense of power and all confidence. The sacred weakens them. They occupy a powerless and humble attitude towards it. Nevertheless, nothing is really sacred in itself. Its alleged sacredness is created by ourselves. It is a phantom of our own making. In the, quote, Christian age we are living, we are in it. We cannot escape from it. It surrounds us, and those who are most opposed to Christianity, who feel most resentful about it, are the very ones who are the most zealous, bringing to pass its final completeness. The God who, quote, is love, unquote, is an over-officious God. He will not leave the world in peace, but wants to make it better than it is. As St. Athanasius said, God became human to make men divine. He puts his hand in the game everywhere. He won't leave us alone. His fatherly care and love deprives us of all independence, all self-respect. But only look at that high personage who cares so benignly for his people. Is he not unselfish, incarnate? Does he not sacrifice himself hourly upon the altar of his people's welfare? Oh, yes, for his people's welfare. How nice it sounds. But show yourself not his but your own. And what happens? For daring... To back away from his egoism, you will be discriminated against or cast into prison. This high parsonage has set his mind on nothing but himself, his own welfare. He is to himself the unique one, the all in all. He cannot tolerate you or anyone who would not be one of his people, i.e. who would not belong to him. He who teaches you unselfishness, contempt of self, is your seducer. He is your foe. The general welfare may exalt aloud while I must lay down like a whipped dog. The Christian way of viewing things has gradually stamped honorable words into dishonor. Let us bring them back to honor again. As long as you believe in, quote, the truth, unquote, you do not believe in yourself. You are a servant. A serving man, that is to say, a religious man. The state's behavior is violence, and it calls its violence law. The state practices violence always, but the individual is prohibited from doing so. In age imbued with error, some there be who always derive profit and advantage therefrom, Will all the rest have to suffer therefrom? The state and impoverishment are one and the same. They both grow out of each other. The one results from the other. You long for freedom, you people, fools that ye be. If you took might to yourself, freedom would come racing to you. It is possible that I can make very little out of myself, but that little is everything and is better for me than what I might allow to be made out of me by the power of others. Improving and reforming things is the madness and mongolism of the Europeans. Thereby, he is perpetually setting up again as new what already exists. Defend yourself and no one will do you any wrong. He who would break your will has you yourself to deal with. He is your enemy. 
deal thou accordingly unto him. A man covers his booty with his shield, thus it becomes property, his property. My ego is the only thing which is of absolute value to me. The condition of humanity does not interest me. I do not sacrifice anything to alleged brethren. I use them only. The difference between Catholics, Protestants, Mohammedans, Mormons, Jews, Buddhists, etc., etc., is a mere ecclesiastical squabble, a wrangling of priests. You alone are the, quote, the truth, unquote, or rather you are more than the truth. Truth is nothing at all before you yourself. For me, there is no truth, because to me there is nothing Therefore, turn to your own selves rather than to your false idols and shibboleths. Bring out from within yourselves what power is there. Bring it to light and to activity. Bring yourselves to revelation. Communism, which assumes that men have, quote, equal right, unquote, by nature, contradicts its own proposition till it comes to this, that men have no rights of any kind by nature. Look upon yourself as possessing more and greater power than others credit you with, and you will have more and greater power. Regard yourself as more, and you will be more. The young are driven through the schools to learn the old sing-song. When they have it by heart, then they are declared of age. The young are of an age when they can twitter like the old. The thought, the ideal of the benevolent state passed into all hearts and awakened enthusiasms to serve it, to obey it, to lie for it, to fight for it, to sacrifice for it, this mundane God became the new divine obedience and holy worship. And the state may shine gloriously while in the background I starve. The manual laborers have a most enormous power in their hands. Should they once become conscious of that power and use it in a business-like way, nothing could withstand them. They need only to stop laboring, appropriate the products of their own labor to their own use and enjoy it. This is the instinct that moves the labor disturbances we see here and there. Just observe the nation that is defended by devoted patriots. The said patriots fall in bloody battle, or else in the daily fight with hunger. But what does the nation trouble about that? By the manure of their corpses, it comes to its bloom, its flowering. The individuals have died for the great cause, whereupon the nation sends some words of thanks after them, and has all the profit of it. I call that the egoism that pays. Catholicism dragged its devotees before the evil tribunal of ecclesiastics. Protestantism hauled them into the gloomy court of arbitrary biblical interpretation. Politics brings them before its glowering department of justice. Rationalism would indict them at the bar of reason, unquote. But wherein is a man bettered if he is always to be judged? What does he gain if his jurors and judges and jailers merely change their uniform and names? The monarch, in the person of the crown ruler, had been indeed a paltry monarch compared with this new monarch, the sovereign nation. This new royalty is a thousand times more severe, stricter, more consistent against the new monarch that is no longer any right or any privilege of any kind. It becomes everything. How limited an absolute king of the ancient regime looks alongside a modern government. The liberal revolutionists affected the transformation of limited monarchisms into absolute monarchisms. My freedom becomes my own absolutely when it is also my might. A religion, a government, a fatherland, a family, a country, that does not know how to acquire my voluntary love and goodwill. I myself am not obliged to love. I need not love it because I myself am myself and fix the price of my love at my pleasure. Because it is mine, it is my own. 
the state cannot give up the claim that its laws and injunctions are consecrated and holy. Thus, in the eyes of the individual, government takes on the nimbus of a consecrated saint, so that he who transgresses its absolute commandments is regarded as if he were fighting against a deity's commands. This view, remember, was once widely affirmed by the Church. If the Church had its deadly sins, the government has its capital crimes. If the one had heretics and infidels, the other has rebels, criminals, and traitors, anarchists. But will the sanctity of the state not fall also like the sanctity of the Church, the terror of its laws, the reverence for its courts, the drear humility of its contributing taxpayers, Will this remain forever? Will the brow of that holy saint be someday stripped of its glittering halo? I behold how men are fettered in gloomy superstitions by a swarm of priest-invented phantoms. To the extent of my powers, I partially draw aside one corner of the curtain and let a flash of daylight fall on the nocturnal spookery. What is it that inspires me to do this? Is it my love for you? Not at all. I write because I want to secure for my own thought and existence in the world. Even if I foresaw that these thoughts of mine would deprive you of your rest in peace, even if I perceived coming the bloodiest of wars and the downfall of empires and generations of men springing from this seed thought, I would nevertheless scatter it as widely as I could.